teach you guys. And um, my father, at a young age, my father used to box. My, uh, my father was an all-round athlete, but who he introduced me to at a young age was Muhammad Ali. I grew up watching Muhammad Ali tapes. I love Muhammad Ali. Not only was he the best boxer, pound for pound, ever, ever, but he was a great role model because he stood for things other than himself. He didn't just think about himself. When he had that public spotlight, when he had that podium, he made sure he used it for good. He spoke about real issues, real things going on in society that we needed help with, that people needed help with. He used his celebrity, his persona to, you know, help empower people, to give people confidence, self-esteem, you know, to show people that, you know, you can rise from nothing and become whoever you want to be, you know. Uh, in the 80s, you know, he went to, when we were doing, when we had the Iran-Contra whole, whole uh, uh, deal and they had those United States hostages, all of the negotiations were unsuccessful. Muhammad Ali went over there and was able to negotiate and get a lot of our POWs back. And that's amazing. A lot of people don't talk about stuff like that. I'm um, not here to talk about politics or wars or any of that. All I'm saying is this man is a person who, at the height of his career, was, was willing to leave it all, sacrifice it all for what he believed in. Whether you believe in what he believes in or not is irrelevant. The fact that somebody got that much character, to say, take it all, take my freedom, kill me, but I'm not gonna do something that I don't believe in. I think that's, that's a, a huge testament to the human will. That's a huge testament to people who are generally good people. And I just wanna promote that kind of behavior. I wanna promote, like, me, you guys, we all have it in us. We all have it in us to be, you know, really, really good people. You know, Muhammad Ali is an example of that. Um, so, take, look, at, look into him, look into his life. Very fascinating, look into the things that he stood up for and to him being 100% himself at all times. You know what I mean? But I'm gonna leave y'all with a little, a little clip that I get, so, I get goosebumps from seeing it. This is after he fought George Foreman. Everybody thought that George Foreman was gonna annihilate him. He was older than him. George Foreman was a young, strong bull, probably the hardest hitting heavyweight in history. And uh, George Foreman was assassinating. He wasn't beating, he was assassinating everybody until he got to Ali. Nobody believed that Ali can do what he did. Check this out. Is this on close? You tell, is it live? Right now. Everybody stop talking now, attention. I told you, all of my critics, I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. When I beat Sonny Liston, I told you today, I'm still the greatest of all time. Never again defeat me. Never again say that I'm going to be defeated. Never again make me the underdog until I'm about 50 years old. Right. Then you might get me. But I didn't dance. I didn't dance for a reason. I wanted to make him lose all his power. I kept telling him he had no punch. He couldn't hit. He's swinging like a sissy. He's missing. Let me see your box. I hadn't started dancing yet. You can't say my legs are gone. You can't say I was tired because what happened? I didn't dance from the second round on. I stayed on the ropes. When I stay on the ropes, you think I'm doing bad. But I want all boxers to put this in the page of boxing. Staying on the ropes is a beautiful thing with a heavyweight when you make him shoot his best shots and you know he's not hitting you. I would have gave George Soma two rounds of steady punching because after that he was mine. And I have a radar built inside me. I know how to judge punches. Didn't I tell all of you out there? on your local radio shows, mostly black stations. I told you, I'm going to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. His hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. So that's what happened. That's what you said to me. But tell me now, are you really going to retire, Mohammed? I'm seriously thinking about retiring. There's nothing else for me to fight. I told him, well, I'm going to retire. I'm going to hold the title for a few months. I don't, they took my title unjustly. I told you, I'm the real champion. I told you, I'm the champion of the world. All of you bow. All of my critics crawl. All of you suckers who write the rain magazine. Box and Little Stair. All of you suckers bow because the stage was set. You made him great. You made him a bad John Lewis. You made him a hard puncher. But I want everybody from this moment on to recognize me as the scholar of boxing. <laughs>